Geraint, a sad day for sport. We say goodbye to two legends today, but for Williams, how do you think he'll be remembered? He was utterly fearless. Uh, he is legendary status within Wales and within within the rugby community as well. Um, any any aspiring fullback um, would want to be eh, would would uh, would wish to be the player that he was. He was a, a phenomenal talent um, in rugby terms for Wales. Uh, 55 caps. It doesn't sound like that much these days when you have players that are are regularly getting a century. But back when JPR was playing in, in throughout uh, the, the 1970s, that is an awful lot of caps. They played uh, fewer matches back then, and in total as well, uh, on top of those 55 caps for Wales, when they were a phenomenally successful side throughout the 70s, it was literally Grand Slam after Grand Slam after Five Nations Championship, as it was back there. They were expected to win, and they more often than the not did win. Uh, he played with the greats of Gareth Edwards, uh, Phil Bennett, Barry John, the, the list can go on. And he is up there with it as well. Uh, his club rugby played, as you mentioned there, the London Welsh Club, Bridgend as well. Uh, he played at uh, the London Welsh Club. I think there were seven British, Lion, uh, British and Irish Lions uh, in that side alone. Uh, he starred with the Lions in 1971, 1974, series wins. They won them both in New Zealand in 71 and in South Africa in 74, JPR. I mentioned they're fearless. He used to put his head in places where a fullback should never put his his head in and go and play at a speed and with an ability which was uh, really took the game to a, a new level. Uh, he was an absolute legend uh, of the game and also, with because of that, legendary status within Wales. Yeah, and, and as well as that, Garrett, legendary status within the sport of rugby as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. Could be, he slightly transcended uh, the, the game of rugby. Um, rugby is sort of in the 1970s when Wales were literally winning everything, became very cool. Um, they were amateur, they were not professional by any means at all, but it was cool and it was cool to be seen out with uh, with those with, with that Welsh side to be to be uh, synonymous with them to be associated with them uh, so it wasn't just the, the the fact that they were winning uh, but it's the way they won it was uh, to coin a french phrase the page de joie de vivre they threw the ball around at pace they were incredibly talented it was a unique sort of period in time where just these players who were unbelievably talented, all world class, coming from a tiny country like Wales, all came at the same time. The likes of uh, Sir Gareth Edwards, Barry John, Phil Bennett, JPR Williams, Gerald Davis, JJ Williams uh, as well. And I mentioned their transcending sport. Who are we talking about? We're talking about JPR Williams. Nobody really cares or knows what his first name was when it came to rugby. It was just JPR. His name was bigger than himself, was bigger than, than, than the game itself. Ah, JPR's playing at 15 for Wales with the British and Irish Lions. If anyone is absolutely interested at all or does not know what JPR stands for, his actual name is John Peter Rees Williams, JPR Williams. But such was he a character, such we, he was so charismatic as well. He was just known as JPR. JPR at 15, that's all anyone needed to know uh, when he was selected either to play in the Red of Wales or the Red of the British and Irish Lions. He obviously played for a number of other clubs as well, Bridgend. Uh, another thing as well, um, he was an incredibly fit uh, individual as well. That's why I'm still kind of getting my head round that he is he passed away at just the age of 74. Um, he was playing rugby uh, until just over 20 years ago, two, 20, uh, 2003. He actually stopped playing rugby. He was playing for a, a club in Wales called Tondu. He was, he was turning out for them. It's sort of well into his 50s. Um, he was also an incredibly talented sportsman beyond rugby as well. Uh, I think a lot of people certainly who follow rugby are from that era well aware that uh, he could have been a serious tennis player. Well, he was a serious tennis player, but he won the British junior title at Wimbledon in 1966. It's not Junior Wimbledon, that's the sort of the British, it's called the British Junior title back in 1966, he won it there. He beat David Lloyd uh, in, in that game there. He was a seriously, seriously good tennis player as well. I think he's one of those guys that probably could have played any sport to a terrific standard. And he played rugby, tennis, anything uh, to, a, to a high, high standard. But in terms of sort of his, his, his impact on rugby, it was absolutely massive. And um, 
because he was so good as well, you had a number of players, not just from Wales, from England, but the home nations here, from France and the New Zealand and South Africa, especially, who respected him beyond belief. They realised just how good he was. And I think some of the comments as well were from New Zealanders and South Africans, they kind of wished they had their own JPR. And from those countries saying that about, uh, you know, a tiny country like Wales that had those players and those players of those calibre, uh, that was some compliment. Uh, Geraint, he sounds like a phenomenal athlete, not just for the rugby and the tennis, but also cricket as well. Is that right? I think he can pretty much put it. Put it. I think he can put his hand to anything. He he was such a, 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 a talented sportsman. Uh, I, I I'll admit I, I I didn't know JPR Williams well, but I have had met him through family collections. Uh, I think the first time I ever watched him play, if you want a, a little story, I was um, I was whisked into Cardiff Arms Park as it was back then in 1980 as a very very small young man sitting on my dad's lap. Uh, my uncle was actually the coach of the Welsh national side at the time and selected JPR at 15. He was playing. Uh, they were playing New Zealand. I also remember him playing and pretty much beating England a year later as well. That was in the back end of his career uh, in, in the in the in 1980 81 but throughout his the, the the 1970s he barely lost a match playing for Wales but yeah he could play uh, any sport as well but there's an, another interesting thing as well we've talked about his rugby his his tennis his cricket i think he does say he could probably play to a high standard any sport he wanted to as well his father said to him and this is a quote that uh, i've been reminded of sport is for enjoyment not for money you get a proper job that is what his father told him. Not only was he a, a hugely talented sportsman, but he was also a hugely tal a talented man of medicine. He was an orthopaedic surgeon uh, a, a, as well, went on to have a very, very successful career once he... He finally, well, he never really felt finally play, ever, ever ended playing any sport. Once he was sort of playing uh, the high-end uh, rugby for, for Wales and British and Irish Lions, he still had a career throughout that, but he was a hugely successful orthopaedic surgeon indeed. Uh, he's, he's, uh, one of his son-in-laws, who, again, I am, I'm, I'm a friend of as well, he is an orthopaedic surgeon uh, as well. So there's a, there's a family sort of uh, uh, lineage there down there from great sporting genes, but also great medical genes as well, because he was a, a hugely talented uh, and, and charismatic individual. Geraint, thank you for the moment.